afternoon. This is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and you got it. I'm in the city of Chicago with a pickup truck that actually fits in my garage. So I'm going to take a look at this vehicle from a city perspective. And I'm Tim, and I'm out here in the country, not the city. And I have the same Honda Ridge Line. And in my portion of review, I'm going to tell you about the exterior. I'll tell you about some of my driving impressions and talk to you a little bit about towing because it's kind of interesting with this truck. Let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, I think we got a slight break in the traffic this morning, kind of heavy out here, but everything on the front here is new for t this model year. You have everything from this pillar, they're saying this is called the A pillar. Ford is new, and I'll see if I can't put some video on the screen and compare. It's kind of hard to see the differences um, when I'm looking at it straight on versus other trucks, but this is the HPD version. To trim level, you have the new 18 inch tires there with the special gold uh, rim. People have loved that or don't love, love that. You get some different fender flares, these fender flares for the trim package. You get the decal and yeah, that's basically what you get in this. <laughs> uh, come around the side, oh, I get another decal here. I have, this is a sport all wheel drive. I do have a new rear bumper back there with a dual exhaust that's new for this year as well. And I'll, again, I'll put some video on the screen. We'll see if we can't see some differences there. Now, the biggest thing with this truck has always been the versatility of opening like this or opening like this right so either way what's always been nice with Honda's is how they've done their bed it's, it comes standard with like a hard plastic bed liner it's just standard in the truck um, because they don't have another line they don't have a, a solid bed there um, and you have the nice tie down hooks everywhere. I got two here, I got two there. Up there, I got tie down hooks as well. And nice because they're down in the, the bottom. These are like the uh, really good style, uh, almost looks like they're boat hooks. And then you have the storage area, which people have used for, you can use it as a cooler. So it's got the drop out there. I've done it for a cooler on different camping trips. And I was just talking to an owner the other day at the golf course who has one of these. And he told me he just puts all of his uh, emergency rescue stuff, like uh, road a winter you know road care kit or like a oil or a, a tie down straps anything he n might need for emergency road service or if something happens in the winter time uh, which is a big deal around here to make sure you are prepared so that's what you got going back here this has always been a pretty handy bed i put the mountain bike back here a few times this week and i think fits pretty well i really had no problems i did a two by four no issues two by four yeah it sticks out the side but it didn't stick out maybe a foot or so so it actually works I actually I'd like this bed quite a bit so again I got the decals I got the uh, tires with the gold rims which are pretty interesting to look at bronze I have the fender flares for the HPD package and uh, I have this kind of cool color so I'm gonna go ahead and find a color and I'll put it on the screen but yeah I, I kind of you know it's it's better it's made to be more uh, more aggressive looking and they say it's appealing to more younger buyers this truck younger buyers one of the other impressive things is total payload, which is right here at 1,543 pounds. Uh, that's almost as good as most half-ton trucks are for payload these days. Underneath the hood is a 3.5 liter V6 engine, 280 horsepower, made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission. You do have the dipstick, easy to reach right there, and easy to fill the windshield wiper fluid. So pretty handy as far as accessing stuff. All right, so it is time to take a look at the interior. And the one thing that I would like to point out is that this vehicle is the base sport trim. It does have four wheel drive and it does have the HPD package. But other than that, this is the base model. So you're going to notice cloth seating surfaces and you will notice the manual seat adjustments. So that's that's thing number one to note. So. All right, let's, let's climb on in and power it up and see what else is going on here. Now, the interior has gotten a little bit of an update for the 2021 model year, uh, but you're not gonna notice huge changes here. You have a nice material here that's not black lacquer, and I think it looks pretty attractive and you've got some uh, they've, they've changed the air venting on here so that that's a little bit different but the biggest change you're going to notice is this right here instead of the volume slider you now have a volume knob um, of course i don't have my audio on right now because of the fact that 
YouTube will ding you for that. Um, but I will just do a little demonstration here uh, because this is interesting. They gave you the knob, but they also kept this slider. So you can still, once you've adjusted it once, you can continue to, to do the slide and then, you know, press the, the mute button <laughs> there. Well, okay, so this, this actually brings me to one of the things that I don't really like about the Honda Ridgeline. And that is gonna be the fact that this screen doesn't work very well for me. And I don't know if it's because I'm carrying fingernails right now and so um, I'm hitting my nails on there and my full finger isn't hitting the buttons or if it's a capacitive problem in general with the touch screen. But I found that as I'm touching the items, um, like it, it doesn't do anything for me. And I mean, maybe I'm doing it too quick you know, maybe, maybe I need to be a little bit slower. I, okay, and so now that's going to, to make me, uh, allow me to change things around. So, you know, maybe I need to do a little bit of a slower press. No, because then that puts it in adjustment mode again. So I found that, you know, I have to give it a really hard um, tap or it's, I, I, I don't know. So I'm having a really hard time, not only with the menu items on the screen, but also these side stack items here. Um, so I, and I did have my husband play around with it and his fingers are a little bit bigger than mine and he doesn't have fingernails. And he was having a little bit of an easier time, but he also noticed not only that the buttons on here were hard to press, but that it was, um, it, that it was a little bit laggy. So they've, they've added standard Apple CarPlay and, and Android Auto, totally a win, but the touch screen itself for me doesn't work very well. So I, I, I'm not really a fan of that. All right, so let's go back here for a second because you've got a lot of analog stuff going on and a little bit of digital. So your speedometer is going to be right here and that is digital, yet your tachometer on the left is analog. and that's a weird and interesting mix. Uh, I, I don't know that it bothers me. I, I like the analog gauges and I think it's fine, but it, it's just kind of an interesting take on the display without having an actual speedometer. But I mean, the good news is you always know what speed you're going. So this is the center digital display is a little bit configurable. I am pressing these buttons over here and you can kind of scroll through some different screen views. I mean, there's not a lot going on, but you have a couple things that you can look at through here. I generally just leave it on the trip fuel um, or the trip trip display because I just like to know how far I've gone. As you can see, five, 425 miles um, and, and what my fuel economy is. I've done a little bit of idling since I took my road trip to Indianapolis um, which was, you know, about 200 miles there, 200 miles back. And I've done a little bit of city driving. On the highway, I was averaging 21.5 miles per gallon. And since I've been back and doing some city driving, I've dropped down a little bit. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with that fuel economy. I think you're supposed to be getting about um, 22 miles per gallon in combined driving, 24 miles per gallon on the highway. So I'm not gonna complain about that because a pickup truck with more than 20 miles per gallon is a win. Another thing that I would like to point out is that even though this is a base trim, you've got a lot of nice surfaces in here. And this is a cloth seating surface, but I think it looks really attractive. It's very rugged and durable. And they've added some reverse stitching around the edges. And actually every trim of the Ridgeline is going to get that reverse stitching to, to make it just a little bit more detailed and attractive. Now, the last thing I wanna do before I leave the front seat and move on to the back seat to show you some of what's going on back there, I wanna talk a little bit about how this compares to the Toyota Tacoma because I previously reviewed that vehicle and I did not like the interior. I thought that the surfaces were really rough and cheap looking and I don't think these are rough and cheap looking. I like how this looks. You know, this is certainly a little bit plasticky but I think it looks good overall. I think the screen is bigger. This center stack area overall is has a better design and you have places to put things so you know i don't really remember in the tacoma having a great space 
for your phone if you had a toll pass you know the the cup holders and and all of that but this this is actually a modern vehicle with modern places to put things and i really appreciate that now i want to take a quick look at the rear seat of the ridgeline and i do mean a quick look because frankly there isn't much back here uh, the first thing to point out is you do have air vents but no hvac controls and you will have mm, okay seating room so this is adjusted for my husband's seating position and it's going to be a little bit cramped back here that is for my seating position and obviously a little bit more leg room going on there but not not really one of those really super comfortable spaces with a lot of leg room so if you only have four you do have a little place here for cups cup holders and i i don't know that's not really device storage so maybe ear pod storage um, but then you can fold it up and seat five in the doors you have an additional cup holder and i will say this is a device holder so um, you know, if you want to take a nap or if you're sick of looking at your phone, you're sitting back here, you can set it right here next to your cup. Now, the big thing to show off back here, however, is going to be the fact that these seats flip up. So you just simply press that and then you can pop it into place. And what this does is it gives you some under seat storage here. Uh, you don't have a bin. I mean, I suppose you could put a bin in there, but you, you've got some under seat storage. But the other thing that this does is it opens up the space to allow for somebody to put, you know, things back here to look boxes or I've even seen Honda put bikes back here. So I think that's really nice. It, it gives you a little bit more flexibility in terms of storage capacity on the interior of the pickup truck. And that I definitely like. Now that we've looked at the interior of the Ridgeline, I want to talk a little bit about the seating comfort because I'm going to be honest with you, this is going to be a sticking point for me. And frankly, it was a complete and utter surprise because I don't remember not liking the seating positions previously when I've driven this. So uh, the first thing I noticed when I sat down is the seat back it's weird it has like a spring or something in it and so right here where my back is hitting the seat it I, I don't know it feels hollow it's very strange and so I drove three hours to Indianapolis three hours back and the entire time I just kind of felt like I was bouncing against that seat back and it makes a funny clicking sound and I, I don't know, it's not completely uncomfortable, but it's definitely annoying and noticeable. And I don't know if it's just because I'm dealing with cloth seats or if it's the way that all the seats in the ridge lines are these days. And you know, my husband weighs a little bit more than I do and is bigger than I am. And I had him sit in the seat and he was like, oh, I find these to be comfortable. And I'm, I said, you don't feel anything hollow back there. And he goes, oh, you're right, that's weird. So it wasn't just me noticing it. There is definitely something going on um, with these seats. And again, I don't know if it's because it's just the cloth seats or if that's the way these are now, but it, it just feels hollow and like there's springs that, I, I don't know, it, it's very hard to describe and define. But if you are very big into seat comfort and you're gonna be spending a lot of time in the driver's seat or the front passenger seat, you've got to take this on longer than a 10 minute drive because I did not find these seats comfortable over the long haul. Um, so like I said, three hours, three hours, and um, the, these seats did not do it for me. They're not, they're not too firm, you know, in the General Motors vehicles, we've, we've encountered that. I almost think that these are too soft. Is that a thing? Maybe it's a thing. So the front seats get a no for me, um, but let's, let's check out the back for a second because maybe, maybe they're a little bit different. And I will say that I do like this big space right here because it's very easy for me to just slide right back. Oh, oh, this, this is actually um, not good either. Uh, <laughs> Now, I, I'm, I'm gonna challenge Tim to sit in all these seats as well. He, he told me to do the seating comfort thing, but 
I, I think I'm going to need a different opinion, and you are too, because I don't know if I'm too light that I, I'm just not sinking into these seats, but this feels like I'm sitting on cardboard. I mean, probably this center seat here is going to be the most comfortable, which is kind of a sad state of affairs. Um, but I, I feel like, yeah, I'm really not sitting on anything good here, and I don't feel the springiness in the back, but the seat bottoms themselves are, are stiff and unyielding. And, and maybe, maybe over time that would, that would have some give, um, but, but not, not ideal. Um, so unfortunately, overall, I don't like the seating positions or the comfort in the Ridgeline, even though the vehicle itself handles very well. And, and does um, a decent job of, of being on the highway and handling the, um, you know, the overall driving situations uh, that you would encounter just over a long drive. The seats get a definite thumbs down from me. So Tim, insert your opinion really quick because I want to know what you think. So on the open road, I've actually been driving this a lot this week. I've had a lot of trips to the farm. I needed to work out there. I went to Cheyenne, which is 100 miles away. Uh, each way so I spent a lot of time behind the wheel in this Honda Ridgeline I can tell you it's nice you know I know Jill's got a little bit of issue with the seat but the seat doesn't bother me so much I find that the seating position is nice as far as visibility I can see everything I want around me it's easy to drive it handles pretty decent um, it's not gonna corner like it's in the rails or anything it's not a sports car but it to me it's like a, a bigger version of a sedan it drives like a car and I think that that's one of the appealing parts of the Honda Ridgeline for certain folks is that they don't want the harsh ride of a pickup truck. They don't want to, you know, have a tall truck. They don't. They want something that they can access the bed easily for themselves. They can use the bed, and it can also be a long distance driver, which I think a lot of people do long distance driving in this type of truck. I mean, you have this secure like almost toolbox in the bed. Throw some stuff in there, secure it down, go for a road trip. I mean. You, cabins plenty of spacious I get a little armrest I like and the other surprising thing with the Honda Ridgeline as I turn on dirt is how well it actually handles on the dirt like I'm not talking Moab Hell's Revenge uh, I'm gonna do a 60 degree climb up a cliff or something I'm talking what the average person does for off-roading and that's to me it's dirt roads I mean this is something you experience all the time ruts washouts uh, rock and dirt roads and I've always been really impressed with how the Honda Ridgeline does in this environment. I, you know, it, it handles well. I got some different drive modes. If I need to click in, like I have mud and sand, and they will adjust the throttle response and how the transmission shifts, things like that. But on just a normal driving aspect, I mean, it rides really well on dirt. And I think that's one of the things that I've always thought was that it, this isn't a off-roader. It's not a, a Ranger Raptor. It's not. It's not a ton of things that a, uh, a lifted off-road truck could be but I think for this price point and for this truck I'm just I've always been really impressed with how solid it feels and how comfortable it feels off-road so hey let's go ahead and go back to Jill and she'll talk to you more about this Honda Ridgeline all right now that Tim has talked about the exterior and given some of his driving impressions I would like to um, give you some of my driving impressions. And when I was posting about this on social media, I actually got some questions from people about how I fit in it as a petite female. So apparently dudes who buy pickup trucks have wives who uh, care about that stuff. So I wanna say I'm five feet tall, I wear a lot of high heels and I'm fitting very comfortable in this vehicle. I didn't trip over the edge getting in. It wasn't awkward for me to get in or out of the vehicle. I have a really decent driving position. I don't feel like I'm sitting super close to the steering wheel. You know, the, the seat was adjustable enough so that my feet legs are close enough to the pedals. I'm not hitting the underbelly of the, the dash or the underbelly of the steering column. And I will be honest with you, sometimes that does in fact happen, but it didn't in this vehicle. So generally comfortable driving position as a petite female in terms of visibility and um, you know overall drivability and the ease of getting in and out of this vehicle. So whether I'm wearing tennis shoes or heels, no problems getting in or out of the vehicle. As I mentioned earlier, 
don't really like the seating comfort, so that's going to be something you're going to want to look at. And maybe it's the sport trim that's the problem. Um, but uh, you know, so if you if you level up through the trims, maybe maybe the seat issue goes away. Um, but as a petite female, overall, very good driving position. The other thing that I would like to point out is that driving the city in this vehicle is not that bad. This is the size of a Honda Passport. So it's not a small truck by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it's not a Hyundai Santa Cruz or Ford Maverick size. This is a mid-sized truck. So you're looking at something like the Ford Ranger or the Toyota Tacoma, which I've also previously mentioned. And um, all of these trucks are going to be relatively maneuverable. And one of the biggest things for me living in the city is will it fit in my garage and it did now it barely fit in my garage but it fit and the fact that the ridgeline has backup cameras was very helpful and i i wish it had an around view camera because sometimes getting around the trash cans in my alley can be a bit of a challenge uh, but the backup camera itself has a multi-angle view, which is very helpful. And I definitely appreciated that because I could do a little bit of the top-down view and see just how close I was getting to the back of my garage before I, you know, hit anything. So in terms of driving in the city, this is doable. It's maneuverable, it's easy to parallel park, and it fits in even my small city garage. So uh, this is doable for a city. In terms of driving on the highway, I thought that the Ridgeline was really comfortable and it does well at cruising speeds. I didn't get a lot of wind noise. I, I didn't feel a lot of, um, you know, it's not super tall and upright, so I didn't feel a lot of pushing with the wind um, against the vehicle. And I thought that was also very helpful. And, you know, another thing that I would like to point out is, you know, I've already mentioned it, but the fuel economy is really good for highway driving. Now, there is one little thing that I didn't like, and I encountered it more in the stop and go traffic along the highway um, in Chicago than I did on my drive to Indianapolis. And that is going to be the fact that the adaptive cruise control only works to about 30 miles per hour. So it does not have stop and go functionality. So if you're in stop and go traffic, it's constantly shutting off and then you have to get back up to speed and turn it back on again. Now, when you're cruising and you're just driving down the highway, it's totally fine. But if you're gonna be in a city and you have some stop and go traffic, you're gonna have a little bit of a problem with that and it's going to be a little bit annoying. All right, if I had to sum this up quickly, I wanna say in general, I really like the Honda Ridgeline. It's comfortable on the highway. It does very well in tight city spaces, but there is a little bit of a seat issue and I did have some tech glitchiness with the screen. So if you can get over those things, I think this is a really great vehicle that will be excellent in the city as well as when you need to take a road trip.